just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Bloke in a Bar, uh, powered by Bloke Beer. Make sure to grab a case from your local, but very, very excited to have uh, the Bash Bros on the podcast. Moses Liotta, James Fisher-Harris, what's going on, bro, boys? Uh, good, man. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Yeah, how's the, uh, look, you know, actually, let's get it out of the way. So the boys walked in. And I'm excited. Like I'm going, yeah, get to speak to the, oh. you know the best front row pairing in the competition. Almost fan going to a degree. And then they break my heart. And they go, Oh, bro, you want a present? And they gave me a three piece shirt. Oh man. No, thank you. I appreciate it. You know what? No, all good, man. You know what? Look at that all year. And then I'm gonna give the Broncos boys an inspiring speech next year. <laughs> bro, our missus are like frick. Just give them a present or something. And I was like, <laughs> they're like, they reckon, oh, give them the free piece shirt. And I was like, you reckon? And they're like, yeah, sweet. And then so I brought it. <laughs> yeah, an incredible, you know, season and, you know, postseason as well. I guess outside looking in as fans of the game, me, Maddie, and, you know, everyone, we we celebrate it so much and we make it so much larger than life. But when you're in it, what's it, what's it been like for you boys personally? It's just life. It's just mm. a journey. Like, we're enjoying it. Um, yeah. Sort of said on on another podcast that mm. we're just rolling with the punches and we're just trying to enjoy our time, um, but yeah, we're loving. Uh, I'm loving life and um, yeah, it's just pretty special to be a mm. part of. Eh? Is it? I mean, you guys wouldn't be doing this because I, I I know when you're in it, you kind of get kind of used to the environment and almost you're expected to because that's what you go to training for. But like when you get when people like myself compare you to some of the best front row pairings ever. Does that take you back a bit? Because obviously you growing up would have looked up to guys like, you know, Lazo or, you know, uh, Wiki. Is that space you out a little bit? Yeah, 100%. Like I seen your, um, your post you put up or I don't know who it was. Anyways, when you just put up against like Petro and Lazarus and that, like yeah. being on pretty much rated against them was uh, pretty humbling. Like mm. we watched them and – the way they play the game, mm. um, that's sort of how we want to play the game as well. Yeah. It's, it's, uh, I mean, to be honest, it's like almost coming undeniable with what you guys have managed to achieve. But so when the, when the season ends and you've got to revamp up for obviously the Kiwis, mm. ha, ha, where's the headspace in? Is it just like you're, you want to have that week or so off? Or is it like, I cannot wait to get that Kiwi jersey on? For me, um, yeah. Like we're fortunate enough to be in a great team at Penrith. Mm. Like that's what, separates us um but yeah to do it on an international stage was like something i was looking forward to especially mm. with moss like yep um yeah people sort of not write us off but felt like we can't play origin all this like mm. what have they done without the team and stuff and mm. um yeah that that's what really brought the fire you know yeah. what i mean um even more i guess but yeah, yeah no it was, it was pretty special way eh? Obviously, as you said, you're proud with the Panthers, extremely proud, and they, they got helped you get to where you're at. But you get to almost not only represent yourself as a pairing, but your families and everything like that as well. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Like, I got heaps of family in New Zealand, mm. and to play in front of them against Samoa was pretty special. Yeah, uh, I was pretty emotional, eh? But um, yeah, like I said, my family, I mean a lot to me, and for them. I got heaps of them in New Zealand, so for them to come mm. watch watch me play was um, yeah pretty special. All right, let's 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 start at the start of this season. We'll get don't get me we'll get to the the good stuff of the the start of the dynasty because I I consider you guys a dynasty for sure now. But the start of this season, you're rolling in, and I mean me personally, I was sitting there going, when you look at you boys on paper, for sure you should be challenging for another premiership. But even I was like, but what? How is that possible, you know, like to go three in a row? What was the chat like internally for you boys heading into this season after going back to back? For myself, like I was just trying to prove the haters wrong, eh? Mm. Like just seeing all that stuff on social media and uh, that sort of drives me and um, just sort of proving the doubters wrong. I saw, it's funnily enough, like so the, so we went to the game We'll get to the game. We'll get to the game. <laughs> so we went to the game, um, and after it, I saw like some belts getting handed out, and we had the sh we had the Monday review show, and I was like, it looks like they're like doing like an undisputed thing, some kind of uh, boxing. And what was the so what was the belts? Yeah, it was pretty much that. Yeah, uh, undisputed champions. Shit. Like, 
Yeah, but that that doesn't start until the finals. Mm, okay. So we don't really touch on that until the finals. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it wasn't like a start of the year thing. It was as you head into the yeah yeah wow, yeah. that's um I mean it's so cool. I, I like because I watched the doc documentary from last year about it was a uh, top uh, Top Gun. Yeah. Was it last year? Yeah. And then what was the one before the year before? Everest. Everest. Yeah, climbing yeah, Everest. Mount Everest. Okay, so the year starts in this season starts and that's when there was actually quite a bit of noise because you obviously lost the World Club Challenge and then yeah. lost the Bronx. And like there was chat of, oh, are they gonna, how are they gonna, um, I guess, go life without Appy in the ruck there? What was the kind of chat internally after those first few rounds? Uh, it, was, it was challenging, eh? Uh, yeah, it was, yeah, it was pretty challenging. Mm. Um, yeah, obviously, oh, it just feels like everyone just wants to rip us apart. Mm. Um, and we weren't winning. Um, we weren't doing that great. Um, I don't know what our record was the early stages, but mm. um, it wasn't us. Yeah, we just went back to playing simple footy, eh? just yeah. do what we do best, and we showed that the rest of the season. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, when do you when do you reckon it? Because the way I looked at outside looking in, and say, so please tell me if I'm wrong, but it looks like in the around, especially around the ruck area, you obviously had Mitch Kenny that had been there for a while, and is I think he's the most underrated nine mm. in the comp. But you had Sonny coming off the bench as well, and it just looked like you were kind of figuring out timing and stuff like that around the ruck. Is that true? Not true? Did it? Did you feel like it clicked at some stage? Or um, I, I think we started to um, go away what what was working for us. Yep. At the early stages, um, but yeah, I don't know what round it was, but we started to click and um, yeah. It was, it was after the the uh, Bathurst game. Oh, oh, yeah. We got smoked by the Tigers, yeah. What's that feeling like? Because you've been you've been up here for so long, and and you know people, as you said, people are looking for reasons to go to hate. Pretty much, mm. you get you get beaten by the Tigers. But the time will come in sixteenth, I think. Come at sixteen, seventeen. Mm. Was was there a meeting after that internally with the boys of like this is not good enough? Or so I was part of that game. He wasn't playing, but <laughs> 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 um, bro, we the boys were off today, eh? like. Mm. Boys' heads were down. Like we'll, the whole team was down, coaching yeah. staff. But when we got into the change room, we were just like, you know, we had to have a hard look at ourselves, and um, we did that. The boys were just like, freak. There was the only way was up from there. So yeah, we pretty much just mm -hmm. took that mentality and um, ran off it. Yeah, because it basically got to a point. I think like halfway, if I'm being generous, probably. Three quarters through the season, it looked like obviously you guys were just flying, even without your, you know, Cleary, you were still getting wins and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it looked like basically there's a young squad that's emerged, it's the Brisbane Broncos, that jet, like they had similarities to a degree, but at the same time, you know, quite different. Is, is that when you felt like, was it around halfway or three quarters where you felt like this may be us and Broncos or was it a bit later on? I wanted them straight away. Oh, really? And they started playing really good mm. because they're a great team. But, like, I just knew mm. that that's who we're going to play. Um, yeah, I don't know, for some reason, um, I just knew that we were going to play them. But, yeah, I just wanted that challenge, eh? Yeah. Especially um, their forward pack. Well, that's, that's the thing. Like, the forward pack battle, you're very rarely going to find, you know, you guys obviously – the tippity top of your career right now, absolutely flying. And then you've got guys like Payne, Paddy, Thomas Flegler. And what I loved about the battle is it was just a super aggressive battle, like both packs. Sometimes as a fan, or even when you're playing, you get these like big build-ups and one of the packs like just goes to water and you're like, well, oh, fuck, you know, that wasn't. But it, it did, yeah. and I'm not sure if he felt out there, but it did feel like both packs were like, we're going to go until one of us drops kind of thing. Um, is that what it felt like out in the grand final at all or...? Yeah, it did, man. Like, shout out to those guys. They're top of the game at the moment as well. Um, young and upcoming. But, yeah, it was back and forth. The mm. whole, even their bloody bench players, man. They came yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, okay. So you, you get into you get into the finals. Um, yeah. You go into the finals run. And I think, if I'm remembering, it was actually one of your most dominant finals run, if I recall correctly. Mm. Did you feel as a team that you were at the – and I'm not trying to take away anything from years before at all because it's incredible what you achieved and the people that you had there. But did you feel as a team that you were gelling the most that you'd probably ever gelled? Because it seemed like in the final series that 
and then no disrespect to the people you played, but it didn't really seem close to a lot of those games. What what was the feeling like internally in that final series? I just freaking knew that um, they're not ready for it. Like, mm. you know what I mean? Yeah. There's um, no disrespect, but um, yeah, they just weren't, the other teams weren't ready for for what we're going to bring. Yeah. That's, for, yeah. For me, I knew like we had to go up a gear in the finals. Mm. And I felt like we did that. Yeah. And for me personally, I was like, bro, you, if you want to win this thing, you have to, you know, go up a level. Yeah. It's, uh, and I think, like, as you said, in regards to intensity and also mm. what you said, not ready for it, it really looks like there are teams that are ready for, like, maybe 20 minutes or 40 minutes or 60 minutes. But in the end, we saw, like, teams weren't ready for 80 minutes of that intensity. Is that is that kind of the way in your mentality of, like, you might be okay for a few sets, but can you do this for 80 minutes? Is that the vibe that you get internally at Pan Panthers? Yeah. Yeah. And it showed, like, it took 80 minutes to beat Broncos. Yeah. Yeah, like, for sure. I think that's just our mantra mm. moment, like, all the way to the end. Yeah. And, so, like, that's credit to Broncos. Like, that's what it took for us. Oh, man, it was – we were at the grand finals, I was just saying. It was, it was the greatest game of rugby league I've ever watched. And, and even on the losing side – like I, as we said, we were so this idiot. <laughs> so we're on the sideline and we're watching the game and Broncos go 18 points up. And this idiot was like, man, you've done it. No. <laughs> you've done no. it. He's like, yeah, man, you've won the, you've won, you guys have won the comp. And I was like, bro, I literally said to him, bro, shut the frick up. There's still 20 to go, bro. And also at this stage, you guys weren't on the field, you were on the bench. And yeah. I, so I, was, I knew you were coming back on the bench, uh, coming back off the bench. And I was like, and I knew that you guys had put, applied so much pressure in the first 20 that that was going to be telling in the last. Anyway, he's like, oh, sorry. And <laughs> then what happened happened. So it's his, his fault. It's his fault. Um, That's funny. Okay, so you get into the grand final though. And then Broncos get into the grand final. I guess, did you prepare any differently for the Brisbane Broncos or was it all internal of like, we know what we do and we're just going to stick to that? Um, Ivan always talks about it like we prepare well all year mm. and nothing pretty much changes. Mm. It's just tightening a few bolts and uh, we did that and just, bro, we just, there was nothing, oh, well, obviously there was something to lose, but mm. it was the last game, just leave it all out there and yeah, um, yeah that's what we did. When you uh, – so, okay, so the game rolls around. <clears throat> was it – was the preparation any different to the other grand finals that you'd kind of headed into in <laughs> regards to, you know, I guess bigger, smaller, about the same? Was there any difference? Um, preparation, nah, not so much. Mm. But I think just the feeling like we've been there. Mm. Like that was the fourth time in a row. Like we've been on that stage. Yeah. So – like we know what it takes and I think they gave us a little bit more uh, peace, peace of mind, I guess. Yeah. Um, especially for us, not older fellas, but you know what I mean? Like we've been there, sort of done there and yeah. like takes away a bit of the nerves and all mm. that stuff. So we didn't have to think much. We just went to work mm. pretty much. Yeah, well, it's, it's funny because like you look at that Bronco side in the first 20 minutes, they definitely were a bit like, oh, like this is – they're a bit jittery because they're so young. It's the first time they've been there. And I guess, you know, taking it back to your – what do you reckon What do you reckon the biggest difference is between the first grand final against the Melbourne Storm that first 20 minutes and the, the fourth one that you – like, was the mentality completely different? Uh, not, not in regards to how hard you were trying, but just the confidence in I know what I need to do to get the job done in a grand final? Yeah, bro. Like, if you watch that first grand final back, bro, we got freaking – our dog pretty much like yeah. they just all over us mm. like didn't give us an inch and we we're playing too nice and and then we fixed that and it helped for the next few years to come yeah that's it's such an interesting like playing too nice because like the melbourne storm obviously led by cam smith he's been in so many grand finals he knows that little extra yeah. you know dial that needs to be turned up a little bit yeah. for the grand final mm. and also the grand finals I mean, you guys let me know. Do you feel like they're refed a little bit more freely? Yeah. Yeah. yeah bro, like, <laughs> there's heaps of stuff that would have got caught yeah. up in the grand final. <laughs> it would have got caught up during the year. Yeah. And, bro, you've seen that and they're just like, oh, freak, it's pretty much just free-flowing. Yeah. That's that's the way the fans like it. That's mm, how we yeah. like it. And 
Do you enjoy that? Uh, yeah, yeah, 100%, yeah, sure. man. Yeah. It's sort of not comparing it to Origin or nothing like that, but they just want it free flowing. Yeah. The yeah. game's more like that. Mate, so, it's so good to watch. Yeah. Um, all right, so you get into the game and the first, the first 20 minutes are like just insane. And the first, obviously, big moment that I can recall is you bumping Paddy. Was that something in your head going, if I get an opportunity to run straight at, you know, Payne, Paddy, I'm, I'm taking it, I'm taking it? Or was it just, just happened to be that he was there? Like it just happened to yeah. like I went to go run the ball and I think he tried to like sh- shoot out at me and I was like and then bro it was just happened <laughs> yeah really and then I looked up I was like frick that's hectic like, <laughs> <laughs> started started mouthing I was like bro you need to chill <laughs> <laughs> oh. and when when you as you know the bash bros but as yeah. you see your front row partner do that is that just genie up and g'd up yeah is that yeah, just genie yeah. up going yeah let's go yeah off you see the replay while all of us are like yeah like i don't know it's just something it just inspires your team i guess mm. yeah then next minute it <laughs> <laughs> wow. yeah. okay so that first 20 minutes you are absolutely just dominating them but their defense was you know outstanding on their line were you i mean it's hard to say were you panicked because it's like you've been here so many times but were you surprised at the fact that you essentially went into half time i think it was eight six when really it probably should have been 20 to, to 6. Was that something a bit surprising to you or not really? Yeah, we did have a lot of ball, a lot of possession and stuff like that, but I just knew it would help in the back end. I yeah, knew okay. that it would gas them. Mm. Like, I was like, surely they can't, <laughs> surely they can't hold on. Yeah. I was like, surely. And I was like, pretty confident because we were playing pretty good. Yeah. And if we just keep it up, we'll be sweet. Mm. Yeah, I still remember when um, we come off, we're on the bench and um, who was it? Flegler scored that try? Yeah, yeah. And I was like, bro, he didn't even get it down. Like I was watching, I was like, nah, bro, I was blowing up on the sideline. <laughs> this guy was just looked at me, he goes, don't worry. And I was like, he, he was winking at me and shit. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> was, yeah. and he was just like, bro, you know, just relax. We'll, yeah. we'll, we'll get through this. And bro, did we did did far out. So, okay, so <laughs> when they scored that first try, were you like in the second half? Because were you still off the field? You were still off the field. You had about twenty minutes. 10 on either side of the half time or yeah, around that yeah. around that when they score that first Ezra man breaks through and they, they score again and again are you starting to go oh man or at the whole time you're going this back 20 we know we've built for this back 20. the first two tries were all right and then the, first, <laughs> the third one from oh. Ezra I think Ezra? Yeah, yeah 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 wow, I, I was one. like oh <laughs> I was like looking around and then the boys looking around a bit and then we had a little chat mm. and just uh, one thing at a time, one mm. thing at a time, like one play at a time, one yeah. moment at a time. Yeah, but I was like, at that time, because mm. I was on the field when he scored, man scored that last try, mm. and I looked up, I was like, frick, no way, like, it was a, like, a little bit of, to be honest, there was a bit of doubt in my mind. Yeah. And then we had a chat, um, yeah, we had a chat to us, like, bro, just get back to the process. Mm. Bro, and we did that, and that's all she wrote. Nice. So, was was it the first try that you guys scored in the comeback of your trail up the middle? Was that the first or the second try in the first? The first try, I think. Yeah, I think so. But I guess so. Yoey says, "Everyone, let's just take a process." Mm. Did Nath say? I say Nath like we're best mates, but <laughs> I call him Clez. I call him Clez dog. Clez dog. Um, did Cleary? Did you know body's body language, or did he say anything to to? I guess. Did you get any hints that he was about to do what he was going to do? No. Oh, really? No. It just happened, eh? Like, Unbelievable. Yeah, he's a freak, man. Unbelievable. Um, okay, so in the, in the moment where – so he hits that outside line, so Cogger squares up, clearly hits the overs line, goes around Capewell inside Mam. What, what do you think when that happens? Because obviously you're <laughs> screaming up the middle. Gas? Well, I was just – Looking to run a decoy run and then just get through the line. And then I seen him go through. Mm. Oh, to be honest, I was gassed. Like, I was like, frick. But I had to get there because, like, still, I think they still had Reese Walsh coming. Yeah. I was like, frick, I just get there. And, bro, I thought someone was coming. I looked. I was like, no way. In my head, I was like, yeah, but really, I was like, bro, we're like two, three tries down. Yeah. Like, you can't get cocky, but yeah, it was good. You can't layer up. You can't yeah, get up you can't like, yeah, like, <laughs> hey, what, with two tries down? Yeah. Is yeah. that when you first go, all right, the momentum has completely shifted here? Yeah. Yeah. For me, I was watching it, watching the race go, and I was like, 
<laughs> I didn't think I came up to you. I mean, straight back to the, get ready for kickoff. Oh, really? You yeah. just came? Um, yeah, and I yeah. was like, because oh, we sort of had to rush a little bit because the time was running out a little mm. bit. But um, yeah, no, you could definitely feel it. Okay, so the second try, um, oh, Cleary Clear scored the second try. Critter, Critter, Critter. Critter. Oh, did. Yeah. Oh man, it's, I'm trying to block it all out. <laughs> <laughs> um, second try goes over, and I'm sure that's when you're really sitting here going. We're on here, boys. Something special can happen. Yeah, yeah. No, I think we had a crazy kickoff set. Yep. Got to their sixty or something, <clears throat> mm. and then Crito was just making big plays. Man, mm. he had a couple. Um, I think grubbers, and then put them back into the end yep. goal. He was killing it, bro. Crito was bro. he's a big time player. Hundred shoot, and then Rick. I don't know how he even put that ball down. That try. Bro, he had like two, three to beat. Bro, just a freak, man. And so that last, so it's about five minutes to go. Cleary goes over, and it's it's the third the third trial, our uh, third premiership in a row. Like, what's that feeling like? Bro, I don't know if you seen me on the sideline, <laughs> but I, f- I threw the chair. We like, <laughs> were going hard. I was like, bro, but we still had like I think there was like a minute or two to go, and yeah. I was like, oh, frick, I had to calm myself down. Bro, I couldn't watch. Eh? I couldn't watch the really? last two minutes. I was oh, like, frick. but yeah, it was mad when he went across, Rick. I think, yeah, I don't know what I was doing. I just put my hands up in the air. Uh, bro, I was like, couldn't believe it was like a movie, eh, to be yeah. honest. Yeah. Like, yeah, you want to read about it? That, that type of thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, uh, I'll tell you one bit that it wasn't on the footage, but there has been release footage of us seeing it. So Reese Walsh um, drops the ball. <laughs> And you had something I'm sure it was very nice to say to him. <laughs> what happened at the end there with you and Walshy? Nah, I don't think I said anything to him. I just, just gave him a little bump. Just being a grub. And, um, <laughs> nah, man. He's probably the hardest bloke to tackle away. Oh, really? Yeah. Just to, just Bro, fast. He's crazy good. Yeah. He's got a big future ahead of him. But yeah, yeah, that's just it's just in the moment. Yeah. So the thing is just yeah. I mean, look, you're on the field trying to bash each other. Like, of course, you're going to get passionate after you just won a third grand final. Yeah, yeah really, I don't know, man. It was just in so the funny, moment. bro. Yeah. <laughs> From my perspective, it was funny as shit. Um, okay, so yeah, you, you obviously you go over, you win that, and and I, I I guess for you personally, like just in turn, like your as a partnership, like the huge chat was like it was Patty and Payne versus you boys, and and you won the battle. You win the battle. Is that be- because and, and like you've got the Origin Arena that obviously gives people a big profile? Mm-hmm. Um, because you guys at the moment can't play in the Origin Arena to get that win over two guys that are dominant in the Origin Arena, does that is that almost like a approve the the people that don't mention you in the right conversations prove them wrong to a degree, or is it more of a you know what this is our job we just get it done? Just bro, that's our job. Like mm. that's what we do for a living. Mm. And that's what you want to do. You want to go up against the best players, and um, yeah, we beat them, and that's that's it. Just keep it humble, eh? just yeah. keep it humble. <laughs> just humble ones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nah, it's no, bro. We watched the game. We had most of the possession. Mm. Like so, we had most of the ball, and for the like, Hass was still going crazy in the game, mm. and the bro was making heaps of tackles. You know what I mean? Like credit to credit to them both. Like. I don't even know what our percentage was we had in the first 20. Mm. And um, I was saying a few things and then the rail was like, I'm here all day, I'm here all day. And then um, I was like, yeah, yeah. And then throughout the whole game, we're just looking at each other. Yeah. Like, and then as your man started scoring heaps and he kept looking back at me <laughs> and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, it's nothing but respect there. Yeah, 100%. We went and said, what's up after the game? And yeah. Bro, yeah, that follows a different beast, um, I see. Okay, so he's win. The boys are going crazy. Um, what, what was the chat like? You know, what, what did Ivan say to you after the game and, and all that kind of stuff? Bro, I don't even remember, bro. <laughs> I don't even remember. It was all like just a blur. Just no phones. Just happy, happy vibes. Yeah. Just right. piss. <laughs> <laughs> just family, man. Go yeah. your yeah. family and yeah. Tell them you love them. <laughs> Those things, you know, and yeah. just the boys like because, man, that's. Big accomplishment, eh? Like, oh, incredible. The boys you grind with every mm. preseason, training mm. all year, big yeah. sacrifice, man. Be away from your family and just stuff like that just means a lot. Mm. And um, I was, 
just celebrate with each other, eh? Was there any directives of like no phones, boys? <laughs> nah, oh, bro, there, really? there wasn't to be honest. Wow. Should have been, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have been. Far out. Um, who, who, okay, so we, we saw how incredible you boys play, but who won MVP post game? Who won the MVP for post game? Really had a crack. Uh, there's, a, there's a few oh, boys, there's a few. eh? Shout out Presto. <laughs> <laughs> nah, 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 nah. nah. Um, Who was saying that? Souza. Souza. Remember? Oh, yeah, true, yeah. 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 I see him down at the like Cronulla Beach all the time. Yep. I, does he own a shirt? Because no, bro, no, I haven't no, seen him doesn't. wear a shirt once. <laughs> no, he doesn't. Bro, he I don't think he he doesn't really take off a shirt around the boys or nothing. Like mm. he's just like keep it hums, but probably at the beach, <laughs> hey. He's probably doing it at yeah. the beach, but bro, if I look sure. like him, I'd be friggin' I'd never have a shirt on. Yeah. Um okay, so yeah, obviously celebrations, but take us back to first of all, you know, boys. We just grew up. Um, did you both grow up in New Zealand? I grew up there till I was 12. 12 <laughs> I, 13, sorry. 13. 13. 13. Frick, I still don't know. And when did you come over? Uh, I was 17. 17, okay. So, yeah. you, okay. so was it South Island, North Island? Where about did you grow up in? Um, I'm North Island, Northland. Yeah. Northland. yeah, I was in North, You're North not Island like, yeah. too. And Growing up, was it always league or was it union? Because obviously union is so big over there. Oh, bro, there was it was all union pretty much. Like, yeah, okay. I didn't know league existed until like the year before I came over to Oz. I swear to God. Mm. Far out. So you, well, you were playing union then until you were about 12 years old? Yeah. And, and what, what prompted you to go, I guess, give league a try? Was it because you moved to Australia? And was it because your parents <clears throat> better opportunity or what was it? Um, So league... My first year of league was over there, but mm. I was because all the boys from school were playing there and a um, <coughs> club called Mount Albert. Mm. And then, yeah, I just went and played there and was just taking the piss pretty much. Yeah. Came over for a holiday when I was 13. And then, um, yeah, same thing. The boys at school played for a team called St. Mary's and mm. I started playing there and that's, that's where it started. Yeah, wow. Well, yeah. Far out. So you yeah, played union. When you were tw- like, you know, 10, 11, 12, was your dream to be, you know, was All Blacks the dream or you just played footy because you loved it kind of thing? Yeah, pretty much. Like I just played it because I loved the sport and mm. I had some of the boys playing as well. So. Yeah. By yourself, was it league or union for you? Union. Really? Yeah, union too. Yeah. Wow. Um, all up north. Yeah, union <coughs> until um, under 15s was my first team. Um, they just started league back up up north, Maris Brothers. Yep. And... um. Yeah, a good couple of years there. Mm. Um, and then my school started playing uh, rugby league mm. too. Whangadei Boys High School. Um, yeah, I sort of got picked up from the Nationals comp. Yeah. In um, Papakura, I think. Yeah, they did like a National Schools comp mm. for a week. Yeah. Then um, my manager said hello. I don't think he was supposed to, but he said hello to me. <laughs> my um, my coach got me to meet him and then... Yeah. Gave me a call. And did you you live with Corey Huddleweir and I when he came over, or did you grow up yeah. in the same area? So I played Union with him when I was young. Really? Yeah, with some from like sort of same area, like yeah, yeah, 30, 40 minutes away. Yeah. So we knew each other already, and then we just played a bit of league against each other, and then yeah, our manager sort of bring us over together. Because like, cause he obviously had him on the podcast years and years ago and he was saying he's lived together and it was like some farm or something like that you have to live on or? Yeah, horse, <laughs> horse stables, um, oh Malgoa, I think it was. Yeah, near Malaysia. Yeah, it was all right. It was all good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we were just grateful way to be over yeah, here. Yeah, 100%. Chasing our dream. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so did you move over because your family moved to Australia or did you move over for school or legal? No, it was only for a holiday, like. My nan and my cousin was coming over. Mm. And they're like, oh, Frick, you want to come to Oz? And I was like, yeah, sweet. Came over here and I loved it. No way. And then my cousin was like, oh, you want to stay? And then, bro, I pretty much just stayed. Far out. That's crazy. Did you miss, like, obviously you missed home, but yeah. did you miss it enough to be like, oh, maybe I should head back home or anything like that? Bro, I missed it hard, eh? Like, it was mm. hard because mum and my siblings were all in, in New Zealand. Mm. But after I got over that, that was pretty sweet, eh? Yeah, far. I mean, 
as an Aussie, I, you don't. I mean, I moved to New Zealand, but it's obviously a little bit different because I was already in a professional environment. You don't really appreciate how, like, you know, I remember speaking to Dylan Brown, and he was saying how he moved over when he was young. Like being a teenager in a whole new country, that's that's hard. Like that yeah. is tough. Um, and was did was footy kind of your outlet that you could like hang out with the boys and that, or you know, you still it was no, no matter what you did, you were always going to miss home. Yeah, yeah. no. Nah, so yeah, footy. Every time I went to training, like it was sort of like an escape, like bro, mm. just chill out with the boys, have a laugh, bro, and just yeah, that was sort of helped me get over that. Yeah, but moving to that. So, what what age for both years did you just kind of because you you were making nationals when you were about fifteen? Yeah, 16? I, was, I was playing um, in the nationals competition. Yeah. So, what position did you play in Union? I uh, floated everywhere because mm. um, we had um, weight division from weight division oh, team. Okay. So, I went from prop and then I started making my way up <coughs> prop uh, Lucy mm. uh, eight number eight and then ended up um, inside center. So, because like when you come into grade in league, you were on the edge, weren't you? Edge back row? Yeah, but I was all three prop lock, okay. edge back row. So, okay. Yeah. Well, did you enjoy, obviously, you enjoy prop the most, I'm assuming? Yeah, yeah, yeah. pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> Get in the middle. I don't mind the edge, though. Yeah. It was pretty cool. Um, and for yourself, when did it kind of click for you? Because you're over on holiday. Was it yeah. a bit later, earlier? No, it was heaps later. It wasn't, I think it was. Last, sort of last year of under 20s for yeah, me. Yeah, okay. Like, um, we had a great season, we won. And then after that, like, I was like, frick, I'm close to like, sort of NRL. And I sort of just pretty much knuckled down and mm. and done heaps of things right and bro, got Don't me like there. It. Well, what were you doing for work in under 20s? I always love hearing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro. <laughs> Everyone always asks. Um, I was so I was a Brickies labourer Oof. for ages, man. Um, How's the back, bro? My back was gone, <laughs> but um, the club the club helped me out. They mm. got me a job at Volvo, Penner. At Volvo, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we selling cars at Volvo. No, nah, I was I was de- I was washing cars. Oh, okay, yeah, washing yeah. cars, detailing the cars yep. and that. And then I, I lasted there for a year, and mm. um, and then I got caught into the um, top thirty. Yeah, okay. Pretty and much. I was trained full time. Yeah. I oh, mean, I um a bricky, the Gary Jack would have bro. been killing, bro. bro. It was bad. Like <laughs> I used to like after work, I used to get to training real late, have to run in, bro, dirty as hell. Oh, covered in all yeah. Covered, yeah. yeah, covered in mud and <laughs> preseason was the worst. You're running in, you're like, frick, seeing the boys getting pumped. And you're like, bro, I just got pumped today, now I'm gonna get pumped again. <laughs> right, I know. Oh, but you yeah. know that made me who I am today and yeah. bro wouldn't have it any other way i think that you know look I, maybe it's it's changed to a degree but I, I think there is something in like getting young boys to work to appreciate how lucky they are to be playing in a role and i'm not the kind of person to be like oh they should just cop everything and just be happy they're playing in a role mm-hmm. at all like i'm not like that at all but i do think it does give you a perspective of like yes yeah, tough there's heaps of pressure mm-hmm. but bro, playing yeah. league for your life yeah. like your living's pretty mad yeah yeah no 100 percent Nah, take it for granted. Yeah, sometimes, eh? Mm. But Rick, you just gotta realize and look around, like yeah. your family, see what they do, like your friends and that. Yeah, like this stuff's hard. Mm. This stuff is the dream. I um, I, I learned it a lot when I, because obviously I worked, um, I worked in like there's a place called the Callum Vale Hotel in uh, Brisbane, Logan, yeah. and I worked delivering like alcohol to the stores around the place. Anyway. I learned a lot when I was younger because that that to a degree, but it was mainly because like the older boys, we had a real strong senior playing group. And if you started like sooking like at foot fitness and that, like mm. your eighteen year old, oh, I got fitness again, fire up, man! Just yesterday, <laughs> yeah. um, the senior boys would be like, India, like, bro, you are so lucky to be fucking doing yeah. what you're doing, yeah. and yeah. also like you're lucky to even be in a top thirty at eighteen yeah. years old. Like, yeah. pull your head in. Um, I think it is important. I, I do think it's important. So, okay, so. Um, you both, so did you both, did you enter the first grade squad a year or so before you or was it at the same time? Top 30, we, after 20, so. And then he, but he debuted before me. Mm. I played New South Wales Cup for a year. And then I, I debuted in 2016. Yeah. I've, same year. Oh, same year, jokes. Yeah, yeah we, <laughs> well, he debuted round one, eh? And yeah, I, whatever round I debuted in. So what was the, the how did the debut come about? Actually, sorry. What was the the first um, first great preseason that you did? And because you're mates and you're doing it together, 
when was the moment where you're like, shit, like this is the this is intense. Like the the contact is big, the wrestle is big. Was there a senior player that really stood out to you? And like that's the standard. That's the standard. I loved the contact and stuff, so I I was all for it. Mm. But um, yeah, it's probably just uh just getting used to it, eh? Mm. The actual long day because we're used to twenties training, like yeah later on, but mm. and just a bit more professional, eh? Yeah, just those aspects, but. Who was the top guys then? Was well, oh, tongues one, in that, eh? Tongues. Yeah, tongues. One guy, I remember. Uh, TG, Tim Grant. Oh, really? Wow, oh, bro. He used to go hard, like, full, do wrestle sessions. <laughs> he used to cut it up and full, like, Albert, you and Oh, and no. I was like, bro, I was like, oh, yeah. And then you're just, like, trying to, trying yeah. to match it, you know? Trying yeah. to, but, you know, we love that stuff. Yeah. And, but yeah, he bro, he trained hard, man, and yep. that sort of told me to like, bro, you better harden up and go yeah. hard. It's um, it's that day in day out, eh? Like mm. anyone can come in and train hard for like yeah. a week, mm. but can you be training in week eight? Are you training as hard as week one? Yeah, yeah. like very rarely you find people that are, like the people that are the people that play first grade. So your debut, do you remember how that came about? Yeah, because we had a uh, hook at the time, me. Eh? Yeah, there yeah. hook. Um, oh, I think he just. Left it pretty late, eh? Yeah. But then I forgot, I actually forgot like how, how it went about. But mm. yeah, no, nah, I was just stoked there. Eh? Like pretty much dream come true. Yeah. But um, at the same time, I think um, I sort of took E.T.'s spot. Mm. And he was like a sort of figure for me. Yeah. So it was a bit like, not weird, but like, you know what I mean? One of those things. So E.T. who's that? Elijah Taylor. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Elijah yeah, Taylor. Because he's from up north and that. But yep. yeah, no, nah, I was just, I was keen. If you watch the game, right, I was a headless chicken, <laughs> man. <laughs> right, trying to do offloads, I'd give it straight back to them. Like, oh, no. I was only on for like 10 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> just going crazy on there. But yeah, just finding my feet there. Eh? Yep. That's, that's what it's all about. But yeah, no, nah, I was crazy. I'll never forget it though. Yeah. What about yourself? When do you remember your debut? Yeah, I still remember we played at um, uh, Manly. Yeah, um, didn't get on the first half. We we're getting we we're getting flogged by like twenty minutes, uh, twenty points. Sorry. Yeah, and then came back on. I was like, "Frick, this is a this is a crap debut." Like <laughs> <laughs> getting pumped, and then bro, we started coming back. I got in the field, and I was off the kickoff. Mm. Bro. It's funny as I was like, frick, I look like I looked at Jake Chaboyevich. I was like, oh yeah, he looks he looks all right. <laughs> Try to, bro, funny as ran straight at him, bro. He folded me. I was like, oh yeah. Next time I was like, later bolt. <laughs> bro, that was a funniest story, bro. <laughs> oh yeah, sweet. He looks all right. Boy, straight to the gut. Yeah. Um what so so you both make your debut, like I guess like as mates in the top dirty squad. Did you make it in the front row? Or, uh, debut, yeah, yeah, and were you in the front row as well or on the nah, edge? I was edge, so edge, edge yeah. but like as mates, and you know, you come through the twenties together. Essentially, like, what's that chat like up to the boys? Like, fuck yeah, bro, we both played in a row. That's hectic. Yeah, because well, the young fathers so we we're always together. Yeah, and um, yeah, we'll so, not be separate, but we'll sort of just like yeah, stick with the younger boys and stuff mm. like that. Um, no, it was pretty cool, eh? Like. Yeah, it's what you want. It's what you work hard for, and so like good. to be there with the bro. And um, yeah. Claire's debuted that year too. Yep. Yeah, it was just us three. It was like it was pretty special way. So, in like you know what I really like love about your boys' career is like you clearly were like good first graders, but I feel like it took a few years for you to kind of like work out what you're good at and how you can impact games. Now that could be incorrect, and happy for you guys, boy. That's not true, but. Is 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 that kind of what happened? Took you a few years to realize like how you can impact games and be the best you can be, or was it just a matter of you know you were young and rookies or whatever? Um, for me, I found out a few years ago. Like simple for me is simple is key. Like simplicity, mm. run hard, tackle hard, and um, yeah, that's pretty much what I'm doing. And if I do that for the team, it'd be the best thing for them. Yeah, yeah, I think. Um I was sort of not relying on my talent, but like I was working hard, mm. but like on the edge, like I was doing off, like offlays and all this type of stuff, like yeah. pretty reckless. Yeah. But then I sort of had a bad year the next year, 17. Mm. Um, that's when I started after that season. 
started to knuckle down mainly mm. on extras and work ethic and stuff like that yeah and um sort of found my feet that way mm. i guess yeah it's uh i think that like we get so caught up in like the young gun that we forget like you're learning your trade like you're in your first like essentially you're in your apprentice years when you're in the first couple of years yep. yeah when do you rec- like so you, are, you took that extra step but then we're at 2019 rolls at the end of 2019 because you had a, a tough start of the year and it was a second part of the year where you pushed on, but mm. people didn't don't remember that. Mm. When do you reckon it really uh, clicked for you guys to be like, okay, we're no longer just a team that's happy to make finals. We're a team that is here to, to win comps. Probably not until 2020 preseason. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. end of 19, you had that little good run and then obviously Ivan and the boys come back and you guys like literally – it's honestly – I would wish I wish you had cameras there to see. Do you know what I mean? I wish I had cameras to see you walk out. You know, after your last game in 2019, and then when you walk into 2020, because from the outside looking in, it looked like you were like literally a different team. Yeah. Like it, put it this way, it looked like every single one of you had realised what you actually are capable of. That's that's what it looked like. But what was it like for you that first preseason 2020? Oh, bro, it was a tough preseason. eh? we knew we we had a. Bad year the year before, mm. and uh, we knew we had to change something. And bro, um, our training was crazy, like the intensity wise. And mm. uh, one of the boys, Zaino, when he, I think he came twenty twenty, bro, he like for me, he was a big, big help for me. Like, mm. bro, he was always training, like in his off days, and just we used to call him the minister because he was like the minister of intensity at training. <laughs> really, I like yeah. that. That's a mad. And like, bro, he used to go out there and just like try to play a proper game mm. at training and yeah. we sort of took yeah. that work ethic from him and mm. um yeah helped us and yeah now we yeah now that's the unks yeah. you know, um, <laughs> yeah now we still keep in touch but yeah he set the bar for us yeah in terms of oh, working yeah. hard and stuff like that extras like it's contagious too mm. yeah we fed off that it's funny how you know what a smart signing from penrith to take a guy that just gone back to back or I think he was part of the squad basically won two premierships part of the squad yeah, yeah. you know there's so much more to footy than just the 80 minutes on the weekend it's like all the little things that you can get taught by a senior player mm. did you okay so you have this crazy off season did you have the army camp in 2020 oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah we did now the big fellas sometimes struggle in army camps <laughs> <laughs> what was it like for you boys oh, um, um it wasn't too bad it was more like um team stuff eh? yeah was, oh like yeah team building and like yeah. mental stuff and that just oh, it was still hard. <laughs> it was hard. Yeah, like, nah, it wasn't harder than the, like yeah. the previous ones we've done. Okay, we I was just done. constantly running and yeah, okay. just was more mental and yeah, it was okay. still hard, but mentally. Not like six days in the bush kind of stuff. Yeah, like, no. Nah. It was it's more like leadership. Yeah. Um, trying to build our leadership mm. and how to, how we work together towards something. Mm. Um, yeah, because to be honest, we weren't, none of us were really leaders. Mm. Like yeah. we we're re- willing to work, but we weren't um, not brave enough to like say, let's do this. Yep. And um, I think that helped us heaps. Yeah, like that That started, well, I, it felt like boys were scared to like chip each other. Mm. Yeah. Like, okay. but after that camp, like the boys were like, you started hearing boys chipping each other and, mm. and we knew, you know, no egos, we're doing what's best for the team. Yeah. Mm. And, you know, every time someone chipped me or, like, I'll just be like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah. we it's the best thing for the team and mm. that's how we went about it. Yeah. I think um, Ivan has really, like, found this great balance between, like, old school toughness values and that, but also, like, smart. Like, for example, the army camp's a perfect example. Like, you guys have been on those old school army camps where it's, like, you're losing, like, 10 kilos, you're just getting <laughs> flogged, you're going, getting no sleep, like, whereas Ivan's, like, mixing – smart it's like a smart way it's still hard but you're getting you know you're teaching blokes about leadership and like accountability and and all that kind of stuff i think he's just got that perfect balance did you have you noticed how much better yeah it's hard for me to say how much better he got his coaching because he's done more way more in the game than me but it seems like he's getting better and better as a coach have you noticed the improvement at all or the way that it kind of is run he even talks about it himself to Mm. us he says like Oh, because he hasn't done all this stuff before, mm. like all these um, premierships and stuff. So he's been, he, he's pretty, um, he's an open book to us. Mm. 
just says that like um he'll do this if he knew that blah 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 like he's pretty much telling us that he's sort of learning on the spot as well and something so mm. yeah for sure he's, he's getting better yeah when the coach is so honest with you about that you're almost more willing to go to battle for him because mm. you, you see him not as a mate he's still the leader he's mm. still the coach but there's that genuine he respects you enough to open up to you to a degree yeah no, yeah for sure for sure um, okay, so that first preseason rolls around. It's it's extremely hard, but surely you guys couldn't have ever thought that you're about to go on this crazy run and just be essentially the most dominant side in the history of rugby league. Well, when when you started putting those wins together in 2020, we you look we you surprised. We looking like, oh, bro, this is the best. Like we're winning every single week, pretty much. Like, what was the vibe like in the camp? For me, I was I was pretty surprised, eh? Mm. But now that I look back on it, like. All the training and what we went through through that year, the army camp, um, that was the reason why we were doing so well was because we were confident in ourselves and mm. um, yeah, bro, we just backed it up. So that first, we'll, get, we'll just go straight to the grand final. You're heading in, you're on this crazy run. I think, what was it, like a 14 game win streak or something like that? Something big. Like 17. 17. Sorry. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, it was big. It was yeah. big. So you're heading into that grand final. Now, it's, it's easy to say, like, what did it feel like? Obviously, it was devastating. But what was it like for you boys out there to, to get so close, be the best team essentially all year, but just fall at the last hurdle? It was, yeah, bro, pretty sure, it was yeah. <laughs> the crappiest feeling ever. Like, yeah. I don't know if seeing our faces when they were doing like the – I think – I don't know if Ivan – I think Ivan or someone might have said, like, soak this up. Mm. You know, like watch them mm. and soak it up because pretty much we'll be back here and stuff like that. And we sort of just soaked it in and, um, yeah, came back the next year. And we won the, that. Job, the second half of the first year, yeah. you just come back and he's like only lost by, I don't know, a try or whatever. Yeah. Did you take confidence from that for the next year or was it like, look, let's just, we're going to watch that grand final mm. and then it's over kind of thing? Yeah, I did, but, bro, I was pretty rattled. Eh? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wow, like, how did it happen? Like, Mm. And then, bro, I, I didn't watch nothing until next year. Bro, I was rattled pretty much the whole year in my yep. head, eh? And I was like, bro, how did that? Because, yeah, I think we already beat them like once or twice that year. But mm. then we found out everything in 21 mm. when we watched it and stuff and yep. actually went through it. But it's probably the best thing to do, eh? Mm. Yeah. So, you cut, do you, so you come back to dive and make us all sit down and watch it together and be like, this is where we went wrong? Or was it just you watched it in your own kind of time? Yeah, we did do that. Mm. But I don't know when. Yeah, just different game. Like we weren't ready for that. Mm. Um, as I was saying before, like it's a different game in the grand final. Yeah, even in finals, but the grand final is next level. Yeah, like the stuff they were doing, Storm. Like there's so many tactics and stuff. Yeah. Like, but yeah, we're still young. That was our first time. Yeah. Yeah. So t the next year rolls around, you face Rabbitohs. He's a Made his rabbitos tragic, so you've broken both our halves. Thanks, <laughs> thanks, boys. Was it was it almost? Were well, you heading into this grand final going, we will not, no matter what happens, we're not losing this, no matter because you'd hurt so bad for the from the year before. Bro, we will break your knee, like <laughs> yeah, we were injuries and like injuries. Yeah, because didn't Dill have broken foot? Dylan yeah, had, probably yeah. broken foot, like in the boot. <laughs> he was in the boot and for the, pretty much almost the whole week. Something calf, you had a yeah, torn no, calf, just a right? carry on calf. <laughs> <laughs> Had a um, little cuff too. And I tore yeah. my um, quad tendon. No way. And this guy had something wrong with his cuff, tore cuff. Bro, there was like heaps of wow. boys that were running on E. <laughs> I remember that last week, bro, we pretty much didn't do anything. Like, no way. The grand final week, mm. our preparation was just all about getting like, getting fresh and ready yeah. for the game. <laughs> oh, <laughs> bro, yeah. That's all we did and bro, it worked out. It was mad. No uh, even, um, so I think, yeah, when I did my um, quad tendon, I think Tavita did his MCL, wrist storm, was it? Yeah, it was. And then even he was thinking about he's going to try to play, you know what I mean? No way. Like, bro, just the energy, because everyone was just whatever it takes, you yeah. sort of thing. Far out. So he's basically limped to the finals, like physically, because you all had injuries. So when you're out there, it was like one of the grindiest finals ever. Like You guys, both teams just didn't give an inch. What what do you guys remember from that game against the Rabbitohs? Bro, for me, everyone's seen it. Like, Critters try. That try, yeah. bro. That's what set us up, I reckon. Like, 
Yeah, bro. That was a big uh, influence on the game. Yeah. Because it was just it was pure def- like the defense in that game was fucking unbelievable from both sides and just the spe- yeah. like just the speed of the like the the amount of time the ball was in play is just crazy to watch crazy to watch. Yeah. Was there any point where because like your attack wasn't fully clicking that I think if I recall correctly your attack wasn't fully clicking that year but your defense was like unbelievable. Was there any point where you were like oh like. We aren't scoring enough points in the grand final, or again, you just always trusted the process. You just knew that if you hung in there long enough, you'd get the job done. Trust, trust. Yeah, that's what we did, man. Like I remember uh, the first, I think it was our first ten or twenty. Uh, we kept getting them in their end goals, mm. and we knew, you know, that's only going to take energy from them, and we'll come back in the end. Yeah. And yeah, that's what we took from that. So, what's that feeling like when that first premiership, the, the you know, siren goes? If you. you Redemption from last year, mm. that first premiership. It's got to be unique because it's the first, you know. Oh, bro, it was it was crazy because <laughs> well, we got moved to Sunshine Coast too yeah. that year, and with our families and stuff, so it was wild. Yeah, playing yeah. at Suncorp. Yeah, like GF at Suncorp. Yeah, it was oh, just it was crazy. Man. It was just um, special because like we played the grand final in Brisbane, and to have our family there, mm. bro, like my kids still. Talk about sunny coast now. Like, oh, really? Just like, fuck, how? And it brought, brought heaps of our families together. Mm. Like, it brought all the all the girls together and stuff. So, yep. yeah, that was probably one of the best years. Man, what a, what a, what a grand final win. Okay, so then you, you win that. Um, you win, obviously, that comp. But then heading into next year, the, the whole, again, once again, it was like, nah, no, I'm not going to go back to back. Roos has just hit it. That, you know, that can't happen again so quickly. We're, we're in your heads. You were just like, no, no, that is a hundred percent possible, and that's absolutely the goal. Was there any doubt or anything because you hadn't done it? Like, like for example, the three peat, you could already always say to yourself, well, everyone thought we couldn't do the back to back, and we did that. Whereas this, it's like it's almost uncharted territory. Or was it just like, nah, we have the team to do it again? I think for us, we just take one thing at a time, eh? Mm. Like we don't look too far ahead. Yeah, even we don't even think of finals yet. Oh, like we do, but one thing at a time. Mm. Just make sure we're sweet, get through the preseason, game after game. Mm. How can we get better? We break it down real simple like that. Yeah. So they don't look too far ahead. Yeah. And I think, oh, for me personally, I was like, wow, like I want to play better at the end of the year because it was pretty, not shitty, but like to not play to your full capability for when sure. you're injured and stuff and yeah. finals and stuff yeah so that was another driving factor for me mm. um but yeah well you were you just like it's a similar situation where you were a bit injured so you were like mate i can't wait to play finals footy when i'm fresh obviously before i had the calf um i remember that i felt so good that week and the, uh, just leading up to it was I've, that's probably the best i've ever felt and uh, probably not my lungs in that game but yeah, that was the best, best year, I reckon. Yeah, so Parra, you're heading and it's a battle of the West. We mm. just like we stoked to be a part of something like history to a degree, you know, Parra versus the Eels, it's the West. You have had such good clashes with them. But this this was almost you know, I, I think I think you've played better against the Broncos, but this was a dominant, like completely dominant display in the grand final where I'm assuming like against the Broncos, you probably didn't have time to stop and go. This is how good is this because you're caught up in the moment. Mm. I'm assuming at some stages against Parry, you could kind of stop and go, "Boys, like we've done it. We've we've won this game." Yeah, it was it was pretty good to be in the GF with them, man. Eh? Because mm. um, we got you know everyone knows we got the history against them, mm. and um, they beat us twice in the regular season that yeah. year. Mm. And um, yeah, no, it was just really good because there's a lot of outside talk about teams uh ford packs mm. stuff like that but yeah bro that that game was it was pretty special bro to be battle of the west in the grand final yeah and did like did it come out and do what you did you know emphatic victory and just from the get-go just so dominant it's just on another level like mm. i felt you guys were just on another level so you go back to back what, what do you remember from that game yeah. specifically is it let's go Snapping blokes? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> this fellow like going at it. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Man. Nah. Kenny too. Nah. Yeah. Kenny, he's a dog. That yeah. whole Ford pack, man. Yeah. Yeah. We just we just went after him and Yeah. Yeah. So good to watch. So that second premiership you win. Are you what's that feeling like? Is it different to the first one because it's the second or like what's the feeling like? It was the same. <laughs> yeah. Just 
hectic, man. Like, yeah, once that bell goes, bro, <laughs> it's just, bro, I'm just, just yelling, <laughs> hey, I'm just, just yelling, like, wow. Just carrying yeah. on, everyone just carrying on. Mm. Um, and so we've already spoken about, obviously, th- this one. So you do the three-peat, but I want, I'd love to speak about the record-breaking win against the Australian side, like, I'm sure it's a different feeling, but geez, that would be special for you boys. You know, you've got the black and white jersey on. You're representing your heritage, your bloodline. You know, your grandfather, your great grandfather, your grand- all that. Mm. Heading into this Pacific Cup, you know, you got into the semi-finals against the world uh, against the Kangaroos. Lost it was a close game, but lost. Heading into this one, and you'd get named captain. Actually, well, how did that come about? Getting named captain of the Kiwis. Do you, were you surprised or? Uh, I put my hand up yep. last year. I said mm. I was ready. Okay. Um, but yeah, Jay Brom just just was leading us that year, mm. and he's the man too. So um, I just waited my time, mm. patient, and um, yeah, learned a lot from Jess too. Mm. And um, yeah, I just I was just honest to match. Yeah. I said yeah, like if you ever need anyone, I'm here. Yeah. Well. Wow. And um, <clears throat> yeah, you just let me know um, this year. Mm. So that was that was pretty mean, eh? Like. Yeah, pretty crazy for me. Like yeah. something I've always aspired to be. Mm. And um, yeah, no, pretty mean for me and my family. So you're leading into the Pacific Cup this year. You know, could did you have a feeling that you were going to do what you're about to do? Or like, because it felt like that last game against the Kangaroos, it almost like you'd been building towards that for a couple of years. We'll go, actually, we'll go through the first game. So we played Samoa, absolutely, you know, dominated yep. Samoa. Um, was that special, like playing against Samoa and leading the boys and, and all that kind of stuff? Oh, it was it was special f- for me because, like, obviously I'm Samoan mm. and playing for the Kiwis. Um, it was always been a dream of mine to play for Kiwis since I was didn't get the chance to to play twenties. Um, but when I got the call up to play for Kiwis, bro, I took it with both hands. Mm. And also, like, the start of that game with the um, national anthems and stuff. Like that was the closest I was gonna come to. Like I was borderline crying. Yeah. Just hearing both, because they both mean so much to me. Mm. And um, yeah, that was, and to have my family there. Yeah. Was the best thing. So yeah. Man. And cr- like just what a what a, a cup for you boys. All right. So you're heading into the Australian game, and you play Australia obviously the week before, and they rest some players. Did you see that as you know outside there was noise of like you know are they not taking it seriously what, what did you guys see it as just that's in a stranger i don't care who's in it i'm let a snap have a dig or what in the strategic mm. but um yeah nah, exactly what you said yeah. <laughs> if you're going to strain yeah. jersey on it's yeah. on yeah. yeah okay so you play in that game did you were you concerned about because you obviously had the game that the following week but the kangaroos and the school kind of it made it look like they dominated you boys the whole game, but actually it was a bit closer than people gave it credit for, in my opinion. Even though Kangaroos, you know, won, I wouldn't say convincingly, but it was closer than a lot of people gave it credit for. But were you a bit worried heading into the next game going, okay, if they've managed to put that score on us, or was it more a motivating factor of we're going to, I guess, ambush them in the next game? I was worried about my face, man. I got screwed up. <laughs> and I was like, Fuck, am I going to be able to play next week? And I was like, wow. That was all I was thinking about. <laughs> yeah. But, um, yeah. Nah, we just knew. Oh, mm. I knew what the team is capable of. Yeah. Um, And we've been building for so long, but we haven't really played to the best we could, like, as a team. Mm. So I think I just knew I had confidence and in the team. And, yeah, from the whole camp, that was the hardest. That's felt like that's the hardest we've ever trained. Yeah, okay. as a Kiwis group, it's yeah. national, and um, yeah, I just knew it was gonna pay off. Mm. And we were all buying together. All I think that last week we just had that belief, mm. and yeah, you could see in the whole seventeen that played, everyone played their part. Yeah. So heading into that game, like that last game, did you? Because I personally, as an Aussie, I think that like I, I very rarely see the Kiwis play as good as they can possibly play. Like whenever you go into an Australia versus New Zealand side, on paper you go, look, this is this is a, you know, and, and then what will happen is is like the Kiwis, some will play good, some. I reckon 
Me personally, just my opinion, I reckon that game on the weekend was the best I've ever seen a Kiwi side play and everyone playing to their potential. Was that like something along the lines of boys where we are – we have this potential in us heading into that last game. Like we can do something special against this, this kangaroo side that's supposed to be, you know, unbeatable with these incredible players or anything like that. Well, one one thing was we sacrificed the drink. Like yeah, okay. You know when you go on those camps, you usually get on the drink. Yeah, yeah the boys, boys want to have a couple of drinks and that, mm. and we sacrificed that and yeah. bro, it paid off in the end. Yeah, wow. Well, it's um, because like it's the end of the year, so a lot of the boys mm. are like man, I've played, I've trained and played all year long. Yeah, I yeah. just want to break. But for the fact that those boys got together and said, we're willing to just delay that for a little bit. So, okay, so you run out in that game. And, I mean, from the, from the first whistle, you guys were, like, just incredible. Were, did you feel it in the warm-up? Were you feeling like this is this is something, something's happening here? Or was it until you got in the game where you could feel something's happening here? Yeah, I could feel the energy. Mm. But um, we weren't thinking about the results. Yeah, okay. We just wanted to battle. We just wanted to play the best we could play. Mm. I think that's what we – didn't do the second week or oh, the first week versus yep. kangaroos. Mm. Um, we're more focused on them rather than ourselves. And I think, yeah, throughout the whole week and when we played, just about us. Like, mate, was, so as I said, like, you know, Kiwis have played mad before. Obviously, you've won World Cups. You've beaten us with the kangaroos, all that kind of stuff. But I personally believe, like, that was – because, like, I, I genuinely believe when you look at your roster and you compare it to the kangaroos roster, it's, it's one of the first times where you've had – all 17 of your boys are in the like peak of their career. Like they're playing the best they can play. And like you look at like a Husey and Dylan Brown, like on their day, both those boys can go toe to toe with Munster and Clare's Cleary. Yep, yep. You know, like that's it's just a fact. Um, then you've got you've got Joey Martin with the centers, best center in the world. Um, well, has been for a few years, I'd say Critter maybe at the moment. Um, so like across the whole board, heading into the next game, I actually think the odds are quite, you know, quite similar. Can, you know, on paper depends how which one turns out right. So you, you're scoring, you're scoring tries left, right, and center. It's I don't know, sixteen nil or whatever. At what point are you going, boys? This could be like, this could be something special. Nah, nah, we weren't saying nothing like that. Yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't thinking nothing like that. Yeah, just stay in the grind. Yeah, just like set by yeah. set, got a job to do. That's it. Yeah. All it right was- then. What about? The siren goes, and you look up, and it's thirty nil. What's that feeling like then? Right, that's feeling like Oz. Bro, they're the best team, and yeah. for us to beat them, bro, that was that was mad. Like, mm. I still remember when um, Griff scored his try. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't until then, like yeah, I that sort was of the one. Then you knew. Yeah, when yeah. he went straight through and he scored, and I was just thinking, far. We got this like big red just yeah. flying yeah, down yeah. the middle, <laughs> and then after that, bro, everyone is just happy, just yeah. yeah and then, but we we're pretty much process driven the whole 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 game. And so you have this incredible moment. Like, what's the what's the chat like after the game with the boys? Because it's just such a special moment in rugby league. Like, it is. Yeah. I mean, it's incredible. What's it? I mean, as a, the captain, what'd you say to the boys after the game? Oh, I don't think I said much to be honest. I was just wow. We're just so happy eh, for each other eh? and like that. Our sacrifice. Like that's the blueprint. Yeah. Like that whole camp was was pretty cool, eh? Like mm. the whole camp, everyone bought in, everyone yep. was man, that was the most I've laughed in a long time. Like this was some of them just childish as yeah. <laughs> like it's it's funny as though, but it was just good to be a part of it. Mm. And um yeah, we just we wanted um maybe another day or two after the after the win. That would have been cool <laughs> oh, yeah. to really stay good in because, like, really. you just get like, I don't know, not even twenty four hours, and everyone goes yeah. on a holiday and stuff like that. Yeah, but it was pretty special. Who, who's the, who's the biggest um, clown? As in, you know, pest, but in a positive way. Is it Mulatalo? Was he up there? Ronnie, Ronnie, this way. Yeah. Mulatalo. He takes the piss out of everyone. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Ronnie and uh, Wooden McGregor. They really? Just, oh, yeah, bro, they bro. go at it, bro. Crazy. <laughs> They're the funniest, man. <laughs> oh, it's so good. And then uh, Widamu got him in the wrestle sesh. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. one on one with a re- with a winger. <laughs> oh no. No, it's funny because Ronnie Ronnie was the one like egging it on. Oh, he wanted it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. Got folded. No. Um, and obviously, just before the podcast dropped, it was announced that you won the golden boot. Yes. Again, like these achievements just like keep stacking up. Like, what, what was? How does that make you feel? Gold boot, best player in the international game. 
yeah, no, nah, it's pretty special, eh? Um, yeah, really surreal, man. Mm. Um, but yeah, like I'm just doing, I'm just going about my business. Mm. Like I'm happy with the the win, championship win, like, and even being captain, like, mm. like that's, bro, that's that's high up there for me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's, this is just icing on the cake, I guess. And um, mm. but yeah, it's just a reflection of the team. Yeah. If we don't win, I don't get that. Like I thought, um, I honestly thought Taps was gonna get it. Um, yeah, but yeah, just grateful to be honest. Like, yeah. not much more to say. Eh? No. It's, it's like incredible achievement. What, what does it feel like for you boys? Like from NZ, come to Australia for everything you've achieved. If you could say back to your younger selves, this is where you'll be at when you're 28, you know, 27, 28. Would you believe it, or would you be like? Yeah, if I work out, I'll get there. What, what would you say to yourself? Hard work beats talent. Yeah. Yeah. Stick to it, yeah. Yeah. What about you? Keep grinding. Keep grinding? Yeah, head down. It's uh, it's, when, it's funny when you're younger, these older boys tell you like all these cliches and you're like, man, <laughs> whatever, yeah. man. Yeah. And then as you get older, yeah. you're like, bro, he was 100% <laughs> right. Yeah. He was 100% right. Um, what's, what's, what's the plan, I guess, for as a captain, you know, of the Kiwis, um, you know, I'm assuming they'll be looking for a new coach or whatever. Was that a bit strange for you boys to hear the fact that Madge wouldn't be coach or you can understand where New Zealand Rugby League are coming from or? Yeah, nah, <clears throat> I could see where they're coming from. Mm. And that was how I was feeling as well mm. as a player. I just didn't think you could, I don't think it was fair. Yeah, okay. Maybe you could have done it, mm. but I don't think it was fair as, for the players. Yeah, okay. To have someone like having him coach Origin as well. And, because like, I, I, do you see it from your perspective as like being a proud Kiwi? Like it should be all about New Zealand. Is that feel yeah. you get or? Yeah, I just think that be too much. Not conflict, but you gotta like watch the NZ players the whole year. And um, what about our younger fathers coming through? You know. Yeah. Um, a shout out to them. We did have an A's team this year, mm. but he's got man. You gotta do all the origin, the blues boys and their youth. Like you gotta look after all of them. Mm. Um, but yeah, I just couldn't see it. Mm. And yeah, but I'm I'm really happy with him. I, I told him we had a call, or he called me and um, before he made the decision and mm. I was just like, yeah, man, like, like go chase your dreams sort of thing. Like um, this, he wants that pressure, I said, <laughs> there's heaps of pressure and origin man like <laughs> yeah. it's pretty cut for over there but yeah. uh, he loves that stuff mm. match, so um yeah he's been immense for me and yeah just wishing nothing but the best is it is the hope for you for you personally like obviously you take the captaincy seriously but do you want to have a big um i mean both you boys are senior players but do you want to have a big input in hope making the new zealand side the best side in the world with the best juniors coming through is that something that you know makes you passionate yeah for sure mm. um yeah, we don't get the luxury of playing Origin. Mm. Like, this is our Origin uh, International. So yep. we want that space to get bigger. Uh, we want to bring back Anzac tests one time, hopefully, yep. Yep. Uh, in the near future, and just get more tests. Like, yeah, we want to be the best we can be. And mm. um, a lot of outside noise of um, Kiwis having no pride in Jersey. Mm. Well, we just showed what we can do. 100%. And I think it's only up from here. Yeah, 100%. All right, boys, I ask all the boys this. Favourite rapper of all time? This guy. No. Just <laughs> um, <laughs> put a few bars. No. <laughs> um, uh, for me, Rick, I'd have to say, uh, at the moment, for me, Drake. Drake? Did I'm you like his last him. album for, for all the dogs? Nah, but I listen to his old stuff, eh? Like, yeah, I like his older stuff too. Yeah, I just, yeah. New love stuff. his old stuff. Yeah. Where are you? Favorite rapper? Chopped and changed. <laughs> yep. Um, K -Dot, K Dot Kendrick was my man, but yep. man, 50 Cent's the guy, eh? Bro, like, that Get Rich or Die Trying in a Massacre. Yeah, man. I had it on the CD and stuff. Yeah. Like, yep. And he's, I think he's just a man, eh? 50 yeah. Cent, like how he goes about business now and mm. everything he's doing. And yeah. And just how he like race people and stuff Funny like that. Mate, that get rich or die trying CD. That's like one uh, to the last song. Every song is a banger, bro. Yeah. Every song's a banger. Uh, favorite movie of all time, boys? Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> oh, things pretty mean. Um, 
hold up. What is it called again? That um football one. Remember the Titans? Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. pretty mean. Remember the Titans? Pretty that's mean. mad. It's mad. Uh, I don't even know. Sit Brothers? Sit right? Brothers is usually. <laughs> nah, everyone says nah. Sit Brothers. Um, we just watch kids' movies now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Trolls. No. Uh, Bluey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what first come to your mind when you when I said favorite movie of all time? Bro, Titanic was the first one. But like, <laughs> bro, I, I, bro, that's I, your yeah. answer. That's your answer, bro. Probably like <laughs> you're romantic. It's all good, bro. It's all good. No, nah, Fast and the Furious, bro. Fast oh, and the okay. Furious. Yeah. All right, bro. You know what my favorite one of that series is? It's the Tokyo Drift one. I thought oh, that was the best, bro. bro. Yeah. I, used to I don't watch know why that they didn't go feet. back, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> boys, thank you so much for coming on the potty. I really appreciate it and. Uh, Mate, as I said, incredible what he's of achieving. Incredible. Um, love That's watching right. it. So, look, good luck next year, but could you just <laughs> just chill for that last game for 20 minutes? Just chill? Nah, good luck for next year, boys. I can't wait to watch. Thanks, Thanks brother. Appreciate it. Cool.